Hi, and welcome to this section of the Probability and Statistics Tutor. And in this section, we're going to continue talking about probability and specific the concept of conditional probability, okay? It's got a fancy sounding name. If I had to choose a subtitle for this, it would be uh, the, the multiplication rule of, of probability. Last section, we had the addition rule of probability. A lot of times you'll hear this called the, the multiplication rule of probability, okay? So if you want to just do a quick review, in the last section, we were talking about the probability of two events, A or B. What is the probability of A or B occurring? And we found out that we add A plus B uh, minus the intersection of the two. That's what we talked about in the last section. In this section, we're going to be concerned with probability of A and B. The two events happening, what's the probability of two of them occurring uh, at the same time? Okay, and so we're gonna look at two, two different events and we're gonna look at both of them basically occurring at the same time. So. Just to kind of give you a little bit of motivation, I'm going to draw kind of a, a little bit of information off the last section and apply it to this section. I think it's going to make it easy for you. In the last section, we were talking about the probability of A union with B, which is basically or. Okay, A or B or both. Okay, and we found out that that was the probability of A plus the probability of B minus the probability of A intersected with B, which is uh, A and B. Okay, and that's something you can go off and look in the last section and, and remind yourself of, okay? So, you know, we were drawing Venn diagrams in the last section with A and B, and there was a little intersected region, but what we were trying to find was the A or B, so it, the whole thing shaded all the way across. That's what we were trying to find, and that's what that thing actually calculates. Now, notice what we were doing is we were basically adding the two probabilities together, A or B. We add them together because we're trying to make the total probability higher. If you have two events that that can occur, and now you're trying to, like pulling out of a deck of cards, uh, you pull an ace or you pull a, a king, well, if I'm looking at A or B, the total probability should be higher than either one of the um, events A or B, because now I'm looking at either or. So the probability should be higher. So I'm adding them together to make the probability higher, okay? Now, hold that in your brain, because now we're going to try to find the probability of A and B. A and B. Okay, we were doing this some in the last section just by using our logic, but now we're going to be a little bit more rigorous about it and say, well, I have event A and event B, and I want to know what's the probability of both of them happening at the same time. And if you just think about it for a second, um, whereas before when I was looking at A or B, the total probability of that those two things should be the sum of their individual probabilities because you're you're really making the probability higher when you have two events and you're looking for either or. But now if I have two events that can occur and I'm interested in the probability of A and B happening at the same time, it kind of makes sense that the total probability should be lower because now I have event A and event B and it's not good enough for A to happen by itself and it's not good enough for B to happen by itself. They both have to line up and happen at exactly the same time. So the total probability of those two things and it together should be lower than their individual probabilities because now I'm, I'm putting the constraint on both of them having to occur at the same time. How do you do that mathematically? How do you make the probability smaller? Well, we're going to multiply them, okay? The probability of A times, I'm going to write something down, don't freak out, I'm going to explain it to you. The probability of B given that A has occurred. That's what this notation means. I'm going to come back to it in a second. Basically, you have the probability of A and the probability of B, and you're multiplying it. And don't forget, probabilities are fractions. All of them are fractions. I mean, unless you have zero or one, pretty much any probability in the middle is a fraction. So if I have one half times one half, I get a smaller fraction, one fourth. Uh, and so on. So by multiplying the probabilities together, I'm basically driving the total probability of down uh, of those two things and it together. I'm driving the whole thing down compared to the individual probabilities. So and before when I was A or B, I add them together because I'm trying to make the probability higher because I have two events, either one of which can give me a success. Here I have both events that must occur at the same time to give me a success and so I'm going to multiply those probabilities. That's going to drive the probability down. Okay. Now, we need to talk about what this means. The way you read this is the probability of B given that A has occurred. 
it's very important that you understand this because you can look at what the probability of A is and you can look at the, what the probability of B is, but it's very important that you take into account the fact that A may have occurred, okay? I'm going to give you, a, we're going to do a, a lot of, of problems like this, okay? So if this doesn't quite make sense now, we'll get to it in the problems, but this is basically called conditional probability, okay? You have event A that's, that's going on uh, and then event B may come after it, okay? And so what I need to, to make sure I, and realize is that event B, uh, event B is dependent in some cases on if A has happened. The easiest way to explain that is if you're pulling cards from a deck, okay? Have a deck of cards and the probability of event A could be pulling an ace. Well, I take that ace out, let's say, and I toss it away, and then I choose another card from a deck. Maybe I'm looking for event B. Event B could be getting a king, okay? Well, the probability of B has now effectively been altered because I've taken what card, the first card from the deck and I've thrown it away. Now I have less cards in the deck. So usually your probabilities for cards, it's like something over 52, right? Because you have 52 cards in the deck. But if I take that first uh, card that I pull and I throw it away, well now I only have 51 cards in the deck. So I have effectively altered the probability of B because probability of B usually would be divided by 52, but because A has occurred, because A has occurred, I have really and truly altered what the probability of B is. So when I'm using this thing, I always need to, multi to, to do the probability of A and multiply by the probability of B, but just in the back of your head, you have to take into account the fact that A has occurred. This is really easy to do when you're doing the problems. Just when you're calculating the probability of B, just try to think to yourself, has the event A actually altered the probability of B? And if so, go ahead and take it into account, okay? So just to kind of write that down, an example of conditional probability, if the probability of A is to draw an ace from a deck, uh, uh, from a deck okay, then that would be four out of 52 cards, right? Because there's four aces out of 52 cards. So it's one over 13. That would be the probability of A, let's say. The probability of B, let's say, I, let's say I draw this card and I throw it away and I don't, I don't replace the card in the deck. So I may draw, want to draw for event B a king without replacing this ace. So then we know there are four kings in the deck, but there are no longer 52 cards in the deck. There's now 51 cards in the deck. I have altered the probability of B I have altered the probability of B because I have removed one of these cards. If I had just tried to calculate the probability of drawing a king just by itself, it would be 4 out of 52. But because A has happened, I have altered the probability, okay, 4 out of 51, because the ace is gone. So these two things are said to be uh, dependent events, or you could say B is depend the probability of B was dependent upon the probability of A. They're, they're dependent events. They're linked somehow, because the event A that has occurred basically influences event B, okay? And this is sort of the easiest way to, uh, to talk about.